Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have lots of fun Easter DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. What we're going to be decorating today is my Easter coffee bar and we're going to get started with a cute little watercolor DIY. I designed this little watercolor Easter bunny and I will include a link to the free printable in the description below this video. And for this sign, I'm going to use the sign I got at Target Dollar Spot. I got it on clearance there, but Dollar Tree has the same sign, same size. This one just kind of got ridges in it, and which I don't really want, so I'm going to have to kind of cover those up. Um, mine was a little splintery, so I'm going to give uh, like the frame a quick sanding. And we're going to use that cardstock for the back of the image, and it's just a quick, easy way to make a Dollar Tree sign that looks really, really good. So... I'm going to do two sheets of cardstock instead of just one. That way my cardstock won't go down to the ridges on the back on that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim them down. These little signs from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot are almost exactly the same as a sheet of paper, but slightly smaller. So I'm just going to use my paper cutter to trim these down just a little bit until they fit perfectly. Um, I'm going to go ahead then and just Mod Podge these in. I'm going to have to do one piece of cardstock at a time. Um, and I'm going to kind of dry them in between two. I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that none of the paper gets too wet because that's when it really starts to wrinkle when you're using Mod Podge. But I do want to make sure I get a nice coat down so it is good and stuck down. I like to take a dry paper towel, kind of push that down, make sure there's no bubbles. That also can dry up any glue that may have squeezed out the edges. And I had so much trouble <laughs> making this video for you today. Um, I actually had to do this DIY twice because my camera was deleting everything, stopping and deleting everything again. So I actually had to go to Best Buy and buy a whole new camera. So hopefully it works well for the first half of this video today. Um, I wanted to get another video in before I go on vacation with my son. We are um, going to San Francisco for spring break and I'm so excited. So I just put another coat of Mod Podge on top of the cardstock that I had there and then just laid my little image of the Easter Bunny on top. I think he's so cute and I really love this image. I might have to sell this image too, but I will include it for a free printable for my Crafty Beach Bum viewers. And then I like to go over the top of mine with a very thin coat just to seal it, make sure that, you know, I don't get anything on it. And it kind of gives it kind of like a canvas coat. But again, I don't want to get the cardstock too wet. So just doing a very thin coat of the Mod Podge all over. And we have a beautiful little Easter sign. I'm going to lean mine on my coffee bar against the wall. And so I don't really need a hanger or anything like that, but let me show you how it looks on my coffee bar. I'm actually going to be doing two coffee bars today. Um, I have a previous one that I did, so I thought I would include that in this video too to give you lots of Easter DIY inspiration. Isn't he so cute? I just love that face. And so that is the bottom shelf of my coffee bar. We're going to get started with that. And for the next DIY, I picked up one of these little Easter signs from the Dollar Tree, and I love these little metal stands. I'm going to use that to make it a standing sign to go on the shelf of my coffee bar. So this is a hanging sign, but we're just going to kind of make it a standing sign. I love this. I think it's so cool with all of the wood beads already on there. The color I'm gonna use is Cloudless by Apple Barrel. It's just a very soft blue. And what I was going for on um, this coffee bar was I wanted to do pastel colors and I wanted to use a lot of like flocked items. I think that's gonna look really cute for Easter this year. So I'm just going over like the inside between all the wood beads first. And it's kind of impossible not to get some on the Easter bunny. So like, we might as well make him blue right now anyway. And then I'm going to go around and do the outer edges too. I kind of have to do all of the wood beads and go in between them as well. Just pretty much making everything blue in, in this case. 
And then I want to go in, make the bunny rabbit and the wood beads white. So they'll kind of pop out on that sign and go with my little pastel color scheme. I was doing like light blues, light pinks, light yellows. And um, I love it. I think it looks so cute for Easter. I love pastels for Easter. So once I got that painted, now it's going to be, um, you know, my outside edge looks a little bit bad where some of the paint came over. So you know what? I'm going to go and just paint the edges. I don't really have to do anything with the back on this, but I thought it would look a little bit cleaner if I went ahead and did the very edges all around the circle. But I love this sign. I think it looks really high end. Now painting the little bump out pieces is always challenging. I started with like a little makeup sponge first. But I realized that it really was not um, saving me from getting any on the sign. Um, so I switched to a little brush and it's kind of inevitable. I just kind of try to clean it up with a baby wipe when I get some on the sign itself. Um, and I'll have to go back in and touch it up with a little bit of blue paint. Normally I like to distress things and so I don't really want to distress the back of the sign because I really want that blue and white to pop. So I'm just going to have to touch it up. And I also have to cover up the blue that was on the bunny to really make that white pop against it. So it is going to require just a couple coats to make sure I have good coverage here. He kind of has like a little swirl on him, which you could paint. I thought about going in with like a paint pen and kind of highlighting that, but I decided just to leave it all white. And then I just went in and touched up the blue anywhere where I kind of got paint where I shouldn't have. It's kind of impossible on those signs. And then I kind of want the white beads to pop, so I'm actually just going to distress them. So I'm just using like a chunky brush and some white in one direction, just catching the beads, not the background. And then I just reverse direction and distress the other way. It's going to be a very distressed um, paint job on the wood beads doing it that way, but I like the um, difference, the contrast. Now to make it a standing sign, all I have to do is attach this little Dollar Tree sign to the back. Now, normally I wouldn't like to use metal on um, our hot glue with metal and you can use a better glue, but this really only needs to stay up through Easter. And so I think it will be fine. So I just put a lot of hot glue on the back of it, set it on the back of the sign. Just like that and it does have a little hole for where the hanger was so I did go back and just tie like a simple bow here um, out of some twine and put that on the very top and this is how it turned out I have plenty of content for you while I'm away so hopefully these DIYs will keep you busy while we are out in California having so much fun. My college son and I are going um, to San Francisco. We're doing Monterey Bay. A lot of you guys gave me some great tips on YouTube and social media, places to go, and we are so excited. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's keep it up. Look at this great little bunny that I found at Dollar Tree Plus. I couldn't believe this was a Dollar Tree product. It was $5, a little sisal bunny. And you know what? These things are so difficult to make. I've made them here on my channel. I can't believe this is only $5. He's so cute. He's a little busy with this little Easter egg, so I'm going to remove that. I love the blue flower, and I love the little butterfly net in his hand. He is a little bit fragile. The Dollar Tree employees were saying that they were breaking in the store. So they were a little bit um, <laughs> hard to find at my store. But I'm so glad I found one because I think he is absolutely adorable. And here he is on the coffee bar. I kind of put him next to that sign that we just DIY'd. And I think he's so cute, the little pastel blue flower in his hand. I didn't have to do anything to him. And you know what? I kind of avoid some of the Dollar Tree Plus stuff now that we actually have a Dollar Tree Plus because I'm like, there's nothing to DIY. But I did want to show him to you because I was going to include him on my coffee bar. 
I love these little chunky Easter signs they have this year. They have bunnies, they have eggs, and they have carrots. So I thought we could do something fun. This one like only like sits right like one way, <laughs> that way. And I thought we could cover it with pastel. Um, I did wanted pastel orange, so I designed like a pastel orange gingham print. And I will include a link to a printable if you want to recreate this. And I thought we would just cover the carrot with the light orange gingham. So it'll stay with the pastel theme. So I just um, put it on the back of the cardstock and just sketched it out. Now, I was trying to decide if I was going to cover just the carrot or the carrot and the greenery with it. And when I started, I just went ahead and sketched the whole thing out. It is a little bit of an intricate cut going around that greenery. And at first I was going to cut the whole thing out. And then I was thinking about it while I was cutting it out. And I'm like, you know what? I can just leave the greenery, that beautiful wood, and just cover the carrot part and the orange gingham. And that's what I ended up doing. So I went to start cutting it and then I'm like, wait a minute, you know, why am I doing this? Let's just cut the carrot. <laughs> and I'm glad that I did. You could cover the whole thing, but again, I mean, that part of the carrot wouldn't be orange anyway. So I thought about painting it too, but I kind of liked the look of the wood that's already on there. And I thought that would go well with like my wood shelves above my coffee bar. So we're just going to do the carrot part. And I think that turned out really cute. Um, if you don't have scrapbook paper, you know, you can always create your own. And that's what I do when I create these printables and share them with you guys. I always like to print them on cardstock because they Mod Podge really well with no wrinkling. So we put a layer of Mod Podge down and lay the cardstock right on top. I did a pretty good job of cutting this to size. And I'm just going to use a paper towel to kind of smooth that out and start the drying process on that. If you don't get it on there just perfectly or if your cut hangs over just a little bit, you can always just do a sanding block around the edges to give you a perfect cut. And then I'm going to seal it because um, I don't want it to get discolored or anything like that. So I just put a thin coat of Mod Podge over the top of it. And that is it. I'm not going to do anything else to it. I think that is perfect. And I think that's going to be a nice shorter piece that I can put on the front of my shelf of my coffee bar. So I kind of put that in front of the little watercolor bunny to fill out my bottom shelf of my coffee bar. I have two floating shelves that I have hanging on the wall above my coffee um, coffee bar area that I DIY'd. I did that a couple of years ago. I do have a video. I took a dresser I think I got for $12 um, from Goodwill and created my own coffee bar in my house. I had not a lot of room for it, but I was able to pull it off. Now for the flocked items, I found this little chick for a dollar at the Target dollar spot. They have them in different colors, like light mint green and stuff like that. I picked up a little yellow chick and I thought this would be a really cute item to go right there in front of that bunny. And you know what? It's gonna fill out the rest of my coffee bar shelf right there. I'm try trying not to go too busy with this one, but I think he looks really cute. And we're gonna have some other flocked items today. So I think he's gonna fit right in. Isn't he adorable for a dollar? I mean, come on. I love it. And that's how he looks sitting there in front of my bunny. Now, I'm going to use some of the giant flocked eggs from the Dollar Tree. Can you believe these are only $1.25? I love them. They're ornaments, so they already have hangers on them. I'm going to take advantage of that, and I'm actually going to use these to make a little garland to go along that shelf. And I always use odd numbers when I make garlands, but I have an odd number of coffee mugs hanging with it, and so I kind of needed to do even numbers. So we're going to do like a blue one on each end a yellow and pink inside and another blue in. And I just take a piece of twine and just simply put the hangers on it. Couldn't get any easier than that. We're gonna have these dangled down from the shelf. And these are my coffee mugs. Um, uh, this is my Ray Dunn collection of Easter coffee mugs. I have three of them. So I'm gonna have those hanging in between those little flocked eggs. Um, I didn't want to cover them up because they're super cute on their own. So this is how it turned out. I just attach my um, twine with hot glue actually on my shelf itself there. Um, works out pretty well. I clean up the excess hot glue there from time to time. 
And then I have a bar there where I'm hanging my coffee mugs. They kind of are staggered in between each one of the little flopped eggs. And I love those eggs. I picked up quite a few of those because I'm a big fan. Now for the next shelf, I finally found the tulips from Dollar Tree and I was so excited. These are pink tulips and they're made out of like a fuzzy fabric and they are so pretty. They are getting some Dollar Tree florals that are just like really high end. I was so impressed with those. And then I thought we would just DIY a little vase. And I picked up one of these clear glass vases from the Dollar Tree with all of the bumps all over it. And I'm going to use this. It's not quite white. It's sand dollar. It's a little off white. I thought we could try to spray paint it. Spray painting glass is an easy way to spray paint glass. So I'm just going to put my box up, give it a quick spray. Even though there's all those bumps and ridges on there, I was really able to get away with like one coat. Um, I'm going to spin it around a little bit though so that I can get the other side here and spray it down and it really makes it kind of look like a ceramic vase. It makes it look way high, more high end and the wall behind my coffee bar is like a white shiplap um, removable wallpaper and so this is going to kind of go in with that color scheme. I didn't want to go too colorful with for this one because I had so much color on other projects for the coffee bar today and I'm I needed a little bit more on the top, so I did spray the top to make sure it was even. Um, and then I just used my heat gun to dry it. Easy peasy. I'm in my garage, so I don't really like spray painting in my garage, but if necessary, I will do it. Just put it in a box. <laughs> and so it turned out pretty cool. What do you guys think? An easy way to DIY those Dollar Tree vases. And the flowers are perfect. I don't have to do anything to them. Even the greenery looks nice. I just put it right down inside the vase and this is ready to go. I'm gonna put this on the top shelf of my coffee bar. Beautiful pink tulips for Easter. I think they look so pretty and springy. And this is how they look up there. I'm gonna pair them with a couple items to kind of do a little vignette up there. And I love how it turned out, it's so pretty. And you can really see the texture of that vase painted. And I really think spray painting is a lot easier. I know you can get glass paint and stuff like that, but it's a lot of work and you saw how easy it was to spray paint it. So that's kind of my go-to method. Okay, I have another free printable for you guys. I'll include down below. It says some bunny needs coffee. That's me. <laughs> and I did it on a pink background. And I wanted to show you another way you can make your own DIY sign. If you can't find those wood signs at Dollar Tree, you can just pick up an 8 by 10 frame. So that's what I did. This is the plastic frame that looks like wood. I'm just going to go ahead and pop the glass out. As you can see, it's got like a great texture on it. Kind of looks like wood, even though it's plastic. But it's a little darker than what I want. So we're going to lighten this up with some of this. It's Beachcomber Beige by Apple Barrel. And we are just going to paint the frame. I don't mind if a little bit of the brown shows through. Um, and especially like in the grooves of it. Because I do want it to look like wood. But I definitely want to brighten it up. So I just go around and do a thin coat on the top and the outside of it. And I'm going to show you a way that you can actually use the glass in the frame. Um, to make a really easy DIY sign. Very similar to what we did with the Easter Bunny but a little bit smaller, so it'll be an 8 by 10 which again, I'll include a link to the printable. If you just print it out 100% um, on cardstock, you can create it too. I sized it to 8 by 10 And it was still a little dark, so I went over mine with another coat to make sure it was nice. And I didn't want it to be colorful, but I did want it to be like a way lighter looking wood. And I think that turned out pretty good. We're going to set that aside to dry and then I'm actually going to use the glass itself as a canvas to make a sign. Now the first time I tried this I was skeptical because I was like I don't know if this is going to work but it actually worked great and I've done it a lot on my channel here. And so I'm making sure that I had it sized perfectly and the 8x10 did come out exactly the same size as the glass. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my printable and then I'm like, why am I cutting this with my scissors? You know, your girl cannot cut a straight line. So let me grab my Cricut paper cutter. That'll make it a little bit easier and we'll cut this down. 
I love this image that I designed. I think it's really cute and I think it'll be a really nice dose of pink. Tie, kind of tie into those pink tulips that we did up at the top of the coffee bar. And I just put the Mod Podge directly on the glass. And so we're just going to do a coat of Mod Podge all over. Just kind of working in one direction, making sure I have it kind of even and everything covered. And then we can just lay the cardstock printable right on top. And then I just use a paper towel again to push it down. And um, I do want to seal it too to make sure that nothing really happens to it because you know the cardstock is just paper, kind of acts as a sponge. I don't want it to get discolored or anything to happen to it. So I'm just going to seal it with a thin coat of Mod Podge all over. I definitely don't want to get it too wet. I don't want any wrinkling. So a thin coat and then all it's, I have to do is put it back in the frame. You don't even have to keep the back if you don't need it. I'm going to use mine as a leaning sign so I don't need the back, but if you did need the hanger or the stand to stand yours up, you could always just pop the back back on it that came with the picture frame. And another little dollar twenty-five DIY. I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think? And I will try to link my printer. A lot of you guys have been asking what printer I use. Um, I have a great EcoTank printer that I got that I love because it doesn't take cartridges and it works really well. I'll try to link it in this video if I can remember to do that. And this is how it turned out. Our little Sun Bunny needs coffee sign. Super sweet and definitely I love the pop of pink. And it's not too busy, just like a simple pair of like little Easter ears peeking out from the bottom. And I thought that was a fun expression since I'm doing a coffee bar. Most of these DIYs though, you could put these just about anywhere, whether you have a coffee bar or not. Now check out the flocked bunny that I found at Dollar Tree Plus. $3, they have these in different colors. I picked up the soft blue, he's so cute. He's already got like a little raffia bow. It's perfect, it doesn't need anything. I just trim mine up and kind of like offset it a little bit. But this is gonna go great with all the other flocked items that we've used on the coffee bar. And it's gonna be a little punch of pastel blue. And I think he's so cute, I love him. I stood him in between the Somebody Needs Coffee and the Vase of Tulips. And I think he looks so cute. I'm really loving having a Dollar Tree Plus this year. I can't believe um, all this fun stuff that they have. It's very new in my area, but my smaller stores are not switching, but most of my bigger ones have. Now I picked up this sign at the Dollar Tree. It says Easter Egg Farms. It's so cute. I just kind of want to convert it into a um, standing sign instead of a hanging sign. So I don't have to mess up the wall behind my coffee bar. The Easter egg is like in black glitter, but it's not like obnoxious glitter. And so I don't think it's going to take away anything. So we're actually just going to kind of leave him as is. We're going to use another one of those metal stands from the Dollar Tree. I love these. I always have like probably five or six of these on hand because I use them a lot. They work great to make things into um, like a standing product, right? So I'm going to put lots of hot glue on the back again and just make this where it'll be a taller piece. This is on my top shelf and I needed to kind of fill in a little bit more area. So instead of leaning this guy, I thought I would stand him up taller. And so you can see it really well. How easy was that? Some of these little Dollar Tree Easter signs are really cute this year. He's got like a little blue plaid um, ribbon around his neck and some Easter eggs. And he kind of looks like watercolor too. So it kind of goes with the other little watercolor bunny that we included on this coffee bar. I love him, he's so cute. Now I kind of wanted a couple of items to like put in front of him to kind of finish off the rest of the shelf. And I got these last year for a dollar at Target dollar spot. I'm not sure if they have them yet this year. I don't think my store has put them out if they do, but they're like just little ceramic bunnies that kind of look like wood bunnies. And so I just kind of piled them right in front. I don't know why that picture is so blurry. <laughs> But they are a little bit cuter than that. Maybe you can see it from a distance. And I just put them right underneath that sign. 
Now that finishes off like the top shelf there of the coffee bar. I do want to include a little pennant banner in front of that shelf as well. And so I thought these little bunny um, butts from the Dollar Tree would be really cute. They come in a package of five. So I like the odd number. So I thought I would just use all of them. Some of their feet are not printed great, but I don't think it's real obvious. So I'm going to use all five. I just took some twine. I measured my shelf with that and um, just found the middle of it. And I just hot glue the twine just a, like about a half an inch down from the top on the back of the felt. And then I'm going to measure because since I'm hot gluing, I'm not going to be able to move these from side to side. And I'm thinking for the size of my shelf, I'm going to like do one of the little bunny bums like every like five inches. So I just kind of put that five inch mark right there in the middle, hot gluing that to it. It's just a quick, easy way to make a little pennant banner. Um, just by using a little hot glue, it just makes it easy. And especially if you space it out like this, you're going to get them even and it can save you some steps. And I always like to do like little garlands or pennant banner things in front of my shelves just to make the shelves look as extra festive for whatever holiday we're celebrating, which I'm going to be all ready for Easter now. When we get back from spring break, my son um, has a little bit of break left. He can enjoy um, the Easter decor we have going on around here. And this is how it looks hanging on that coffee bar shelf. I really love how this came together. It was pretty easy to do. It really did not take me very long to decorate this coffee bar with these fun DIYs, but I think they turned out great. What do you think? Let me give you a little tour of my coffee bar starting here at the top and working my way down. I have this little wall on the side of my kitchen between my kitchen and my entryway. And I didn't think I could put a coffee bar there because it has a light switch and stuff like that but I just used um, floating shelves to make it work and a cabinet below it. And so if you have just a little area in your house, you can definitely make a coffee bar. And as you can see, they are super fun to decorate for every holiday. And I think this one is ready to go. The flowers and that, that sign we made a little bit taller there really helped fill the wall space at the top. Sometimes I do like a large sign up there, which in the next coffee bar DIY, I'm going to show you that. But this is a way I could get some bigger items up there uh, without having to do a larger sign. But I definitely wanted to give you a look around and I will include the printable for the watercolor bunny, um, the orange gingham. And what was the other one? Oh, the some bunny needs coffee. I will include a link to all three of those so you can DIY something yourself. This is how it looks all together. I do have blue coffee makers and Keurig, so that goes great with my pastel theme for Easter. I think it turned out really sweet. What do you think? Okay, don't go anywhere because I do have another video for you, but I did want to take a quick moment and tell you about my Facebook group. I have it linked below. You can find out what everybody's been making. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, I promised you a, another coffee bar. So I do have another coffee bar. This one's going to be uh, like a little, little bit of a blue theme. Like you guys know I love blue and coastal. It goes great with my house, but it includes lots of fun Easter DIYs as well. Okay, the next DIY is going to be a coffee bar sign. Um, for an Easter coffee bar, I am using a thrift flip sign that I have remade probably 15 times on this channel. This was like a blue moose coffee. This was a winter coffee bar that I had um, designed and I attached this little moose from the Target dollar spot. And I did like a hand paint stain on this, but we're gonna kind of just convert this sign that I've converted over and over into an Easter sign for my coffee bar. And again, I'm, I really like that blue color. I use that for the winter, but I'm also going to use that for the Easter too. So just trying to clean up any of the damage that I had on there. Sometimes I regret using hot glue. <laughs> 
bet seriously, this sign has been through it. If you can find a good Ford sign like this from um, Goodwill, you can just reuse it and reuse it. So I kind of want some good coverage here. So I'm going to use just some ivory a chalk paint that I had to go over everything because I kind of stained it before and I was really kind of worried about coverage. And so I'm trying to get a nice a thick coat, just kind of a white background, just so I can start with a fresh canvas. Then I'm going to go back and paint it blue. I usually have it blue, but I definitely wanted to cover up any of that stain that was on there before. So just going over that with a couple coats of white. What I want to do is to make like a, uh, like a Peter Cottontail, like carrot patch sign for my coffee bar. So this is a color I'm using. It's just an acrylic paint that I got at Target. Caribbean blue. I don't like my Target quick carrying like the cheap acrylic paints. And so I really stocked up when they all went on clearance, but I hate that they don't carry the cheap ones anymore. They only have like the more expensive brands, but I really do like this color. Um, and anytime I get any paint like dripping down in there, I can kind of just go in with a little Cricut tool and clean that up a little bit. Just giving myself a nice blue coat. I love to do like a hand painted sign. That's probably my favorite thing that I use my Cricut for. And so that's what we're going to do with this sign once we get it painted a nice color of blue. And if you're scared of your Cricut, I'm going to kind of show you how I do mine really quickly. I just do a square shape on there so I know exactly what size I need. Then I change the size. I can even change the color to kind of simulate exactly the size of my background so I know exactly how large to make my letters. So I have two blue rectangles because I'm going to paint on two of the little blue um, like panels, I guess, of it. And then I'm going to have it say Peter Cottontails and I'm, then I'm going to have it say Carrot Patch. The two different fonts that we're going to use today are the Honest Darling. I think that one's really cute. We're going to use that for Peter Cottontails. And then we're going to use DTC Peach Cakes for the Carrot Patch part. I like to like mix up my fonts if I can. And I am... Um, I think that the DTC, I'm not sure, maybe both of these, you have to have the subscription. But even if you don't have the Design Space um, subscription, they have some really cute fonts if you want to play around with it a little bit. I really like the DTC ones, though. I think they have some really cute ones. So that is the one we're going to go with. And I just kind of scaled it to size so it'll fit perfectly on my little boards and the little you know shapes are just there to show me um as a little guide but then i'm gonna go in and um, delete those and just leave myself with the white vinyl and that's gonna cut it out now it's nice and long so i need to use my 12 by 24 mat you can grab your designs and kind of move them around here before you cut it that way, your stencil, you're going to get a little bit more of the stencil background to protect your surface that you're painting. So I just cut that out. And this is stencil of vinyl that I get on Amazon. It's always available in my shop, on my Amazon shop below. I love it. I got a big roll of this, and I've been using it for years. And um, I'm starting to finally get low on it, but I have really used this for so many projects. And it works great. It doesn't take any of your paint off or anything like that. The only thing about weeding um, like these cursive fonts like this, you got to be really careful. Like the middle of your like letters stay down in between all of those little cursive letters. And I'm just using my Cricut Bright Pad to help weed it. But see how much easier it is to weed the DTC one. And I just cut them down into strips, one for each board. And then I like to use, this is paper, transfer paper. I get this on Amazon as well. It's in my shop. They have it like in a six inch or 12 inch roll and it lasts forever too. And I love it because it doesn't interfere with anything. 
It's not too sticky, so it usually does a pretty good job of leaving the vinyl down. And so I only like to really paint the top two rows of this because I have things sitting in front of it on my coffee bar. So we're just going to kind of line these up over on the right side and make it say Peter Cottontail's Carrot Patch. So I'm going over it first with just a coat of ivory on both, just using a sponge brush. And then I want Carrot Patch to be orange. So I'm going back in with like this pumpkin color. Now I didn't have that down super good, so not perfect, but I'm gonna distress it anyway because I like that Coastal Farmhouse vibe, so not too concerned about it. But I'm just gonna weed out all of the vinyl that's left on there. If I can clean up some of the damage, I will. But otherwise, I'm just gonna go in and sand and distress it more and then distress the whole thing with some ivory, acrylic, and a chunky brush, and it's gonna forgive any errors. <laughs> Good errors, it's gonna make it look really cute. And if I can't get it too good, I'll go back in with the original color and kind of touch it up a little bit. But easy peasy, we have a hand-painted sign, and then I got this great little Happy Easter sign from the Dollar Tree. I love the little bunny head on there, and I thought we could DIY him. So he was a little hanging sign that had carrots and stuff on him as well. We're just going to take the hanger off and take off the carrots. We can always use those for another project. I must have had this sitting like on my wet wipes or something. As you can tell, it did pick up a little bit of moisture there. But he's really cute. He's like a white wood look. It totally goes with like my coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. And he's even got like a little burlap bow on his head. He's super cute. I'm just going to use hot glue to pop him on our sign. And as you can see, maybe because he got a little bit wet there, um, the paper on one of his ears was kind of lifted up a little bit. It wasn't glued down, so we're just going to repair that real quick with just a little more hot glue. And he's so cute. We don't have to paint him or anything. Now his bow just kind of fell off on its own. It wasn't very secure. So I'm just trying to remove any hot glue. And then I thought I would fill the little holes in his ears just with a little bit of spackle, just to clean that up a little bit, since he's not hanging anymore. And since it's a white color, that spackle's gonna kind of match in there. Anytime I fill holes with spackle, I always have to go back in. I don't know, maybe I don't use enough the first time. And then I thought it'd be cute just to add a few carrots on here just because it is a little carrot patch sign. And so I got some of these little wood carrot ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And I thought those would make a nice addition to our little Easter sign. So I thought two would probably be plenty. Again, we're just going to fill in the little hole there with some spackle. I really wish they wouldn't make everything like this from the Dollar Tree, like an ornament and put a hole in it automatically, because a lot of times you're not going to want a hole in it. That's one thing I notice when I buy like the ocean creature shapes on Amazon. They don't have holes, but the ones from the Dollar Tree I always have to kind of, you know, patch. So I'm going to paint like the leafy part of the carrot, just like a light green. The color there is Luna Moth. And then we're gonna use that pumpkin color to come in here and paint our carrots orange. Easy peasy. Just a couple carrots to decorate our side. Then once I get them dry, I'm gonna distress them with a little bit of ivory as well, just to kind of go with my coastal farmhouse vibe. It's gonna kind of make it coordinate a little bit better with that sign. And I thought we could just kind of attach those carrots to the front. Since it is a carrot patch sign, I thought we needed some carrots for sure. And this is how it turned out, our little Peter Cottontail's carrot patch sign at the top of my coffee bar for Easter. So adorable. Now, the next item for the tear tray, I actually found this at Target Dollar Spot um, two years ago, I think. It is a little bunny trail egg hunt sign that I wanted to include. And, you know, this year... Like for St. Patrick's Day, they have these things individually instead of in a kit like this. So hopefully they will have that again this year. I've been checking Target Dollar Spot, but 
Um, I just gonna it has lots of other cute little items in here, but I think the only one I'm really gonna need is the bunny trail egg hunt and a bunny crossing sign. And we're gonna include that on the coffee bar. This is how he looks, so cute. And as you can see, I used that little honey bunny cup last year as decor. Now I also got these little items at the Target Dollar Spot. They are little green flocked Easter bunnies. I think I've seen similar items at the Dollar Tree, but maybe the Dollar Tree Plus for that size. And then I'm also gonna use my little Ray Dunn Easter coffee mugs. I told you I bring these out every year. And that is how I decorated the top of my coffee bar because I needed smaller items because they were all gonna fit underneath that large sign, which kind of fit up, filled up most of the area. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, our next DIY is gonna be one of these bunnies they have every year at the Dollar Tree. This is the white one. I love the size of him, he's really cute. We are gonna decorate him for my coffee bar. And I was kind of doing like a farm theme and I thought we would make him some clothes. So I'm gonna use one of these little blue baby blankets from the Dollar Tree. I love this color and the felt is so easy to DIY with because it's not gonna fray when you cut it. And I thought we could make some little bunny clothes. Now, I can't say that I'm skilled at making like doll clothes, but we're just gonna kind of, um, just kind of wing it here. So I just laid it on the front of him and I'm just kind of cutting down a shape that's gonna cover most of the front of the bunny because I wanna make him little bib overalls. So I'm just going to cut like a little bib front there. I cut that down to kind of go underneath his ears and I also cut like a little space to make little legs for the overalls. And then I thought we could cut some more of that um, for the back of him and cover up the back of him to make just little overalls. I want him to look like a little farmer bunny and I really wanted him to have a little bit of blue on his outfit. So the piece I cut out for the back, I'm just gonna hot glue that to the sides of the bunny. And I think they have this bunny in like white and brown maybe. I know they had more than one color the other day when I was at Dollar Tree. And then I'm just gonna kind of cut this down to size in the back with little straps to go over the shoulders like little overalls would have. And this project really made me smile. I had, my grandfather was a farmer and he lived in his blue jean, like bib overalls. And uh, this really made me think of him. And I'm just gluing that to the front. See how I just kind of overlapped the fabric that was on the back. Super easy way to make like little doll clothes like this without any sewing involved. And there's a little bib front, we're gonna glue that on. And then I have the little straps that we cut off from the back piece. That's why I made the back piece longer, is so I would have enough fabric to do those straps to go over his shoulders and just hot gluing that to the front. Pretty easy little bunny clothes, I think. And then like for the little buttons, I needed something small. So I thought we could use just a couple of those little round stickers from the Dollar Tree to stick on there to make little pink buttons for his little bib overalls that I think he turned out so cute. This is how he looks on my coffee bar for Easter. Have him next to a little directional sign for the little carrot patch. And now the next item is super easy. I'm gonna be using one of those Easter coffee mugs that you saw in the last video. And then I found some of these little plush um, carrots from the Target Dollar Spot three of them for $3. Dollar Tree has great ones like this too. They have them like in gingham, all different kinds of patterns and stuff. And I love decorating with the plush little carrots like this. I think they're so cute. I'm just going to actually pile them in my little honey bunny mug and it'll kind of look like a, like a little floral arrangement or like a little carrot patch, like they're growing out of it. So I really didn't have to do anything, but like put them in there. These had like great like green felt greenery on them that I think looks really cute. Now, don't do that. Sometimes when I try to show you guys things, all my stuff falls apart. But just piling them in there 
can't get any easier than that. And this is how it looks on my Easter coffee bar. Okay, our next DIY is super easy. This is a DIY I made for my Easter coffee bar using some wood products from the Crafter Square. We got a little wood fence and a little wood slat crate. And I thought we could make a little carrot patch for Easter. But I did want to stain the raw wood, so I'm just using some Antique Wax by Waverly. And I love this little fence design. It did have a hanger on the back. I just took that off and just staining all over. It really, anytime you stain any of this Dollar Tree wood, it's, it looks really impressive. You would never know that you got this from the Dollar Tree. I do use a smaller brush to go in between there so you can kind of get all of it stained. And then I'm going to go over the crate with the Antique Wax by Waverly and stain that as well. I kind of want to make just a little garden inside the crate with like the fence behind it kind of as the background. And then we can decorate that with carrots and a little bunny. So I just hot glue the little fence on top of the bin, just like that. Um, it's not super steady like that. So I'm gonna use a popsicle stick and just cut that down to size to make a little brace to make sure that that stays in place. And this was just a quick, easy little Easter DIY. You could put this anywhere. I've got lots of little carrot patch ideas for you today. And this is one of them. This one's pretty small. You could do this pretty much for anything. I used it for my coffee bar, but it'd be great on a tear tray as well. So I just fill it up with some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and those little like uh, rope or string, I guess, wrapped carrots from the Dollar Tree. Just enough to fill it to size. I noticed some of the greenery on is some of them are a little different depending on uh, what year you buy it. <laughs> but I filled it all the way up with like eight of the little carrots. And then I thought we could go in with one of these cute little bunny bums. They come like on a little pick like this. And this one has like the little peak feet. I'm just cutting the skewer down to size so it's not too tall. And then we're just going to have it like diving headfirst into our little carrot patch. And then I also wanted to add a little bit of that onion grass from the Dollar Tree just to give me a little bit more greenery than just the reindeer moss. So I just pull those off and kind of cut them down to size because they were a little bit too tall. But we're just going to fill this in a little bit. Making little carrot patches for Easter is always a lot of fun. And then I wanted to do a little bit more greenery. So I did find some more Dollar Tree greenery that I had. Um, something that would kind of remind me a little bit of some leafy tops to some carrots. And I worked that in as well. Just kind of cutting down some individual leaves and filling that in until it's nice and full. The carrot patch is always kind of forgiving because it doesn't really matter what kind of greenery you use in there as long as you've got something. And there's our little carrot patch with our little bunny bum sticking out. And this is how it looks on my coffee bar for Easter. Super cute, super simple, but also really fun. Now for the coffee mugs, I actually just picked up these blue coffee mugs at Dollar Tree instead of using like my themed mugs since I use those in decor. And then I'm also going to be doing a pennant banner and I'm going to show you how easy this is. I picked up some of these little signs from the Dollar Tree. They already have like the little pastel bunnies, one in burlap with the little bunny tails on there. And I picked up a couple of those because I needed more to make it longer. This one is the one that's got like the burlap bunnies on it. And so I thought we could combine them together. It's going to make it long enough. And so it's just a matter of dismantling what I have so I can make it exactly what I want. I want to do an odd number and I want it to be nice and full to go across the shelf of my coffee bar. So... I'm going to use some twine. I actually put a needle on mine. <laughs> you can also put a little um, hot glue in the end to make it stiffer, make it easier. If you, But I know I needed to thread a lot. So I had a large upholstery needle I actually got at the Dollar Tree. And we are just going to string these along. I thought I could alternate pastels with burlap. 
And that's going to look really cute for Easter. And how easy was that? Almost all the work was already done for me. It was just a matter of borrowing those from those Dollar Tree signs. And I hung it on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar like that with those little blue coffee mugs that are so cute from the Dollar Tree. So you know what? You've got two completely different ways to decorate a coffee bar. I actually put this down next to my coffee maker. It is a little egg tree, and I thought that would be a little fun dose of Easter too. So this Easter coffee bar was really easy to create too. Let me give you a look around at how this turned out. I went really simple up here on the top shelf, just using my existing Ray Dunn mugs, a couple of those little green mossy bunnies. And I think that kind of goes with like the farm theme I was going for, for the carrot patch. And I love that sign we DIY'd. And now down here on the bottom shelf, the carrot patch with the little bunny bum sticking out of it is absolutely adorable and was really fun to create. And some of these items were just combining a couple items together, like something I already have with some of the dollar spot carrots, one of these little dollar spot signs for Easter, it was so cute. I didn't have to do anything for that. We DIY'd the little Dollar Tree bunny and made him look like a little farmer bunny that I thought would be really cute to kind of go with the carrot patch feel of this. We DIY'd the little um, bunny pennant banner there on the front just by simply borrowing those from a sign, stringing them together. And the blue mugs I thought would go great with the blue color that we were going for on the coffee bar. So this is how this one turned out. I didn't do a pennant banner on the top there because I was kind of trying to go a little bit more simple um, with the crop theme, with the carrots and stuff like that. But another fun idea if you have a coffee bar in your home or if you need to decorate a different area. Some of these items would be really cute too, you know, even on an Easter tear tray. But I love how they all came together. I think it's super cute and I hope that you enjoyed this video as well. I wanted to be sure to include it too to give you even more crafting inspiration. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal. I'm gonna give you a look around of all of the Easter DIYs and finds that we have today using items from the Dollar Tree and Dollar Spot at Target. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite DIY or coffee bar in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. The gentle April rain that stained the window panes last night is all but gone, but lingers on in scented clouds of air. We watch the town awaken to the trembling morning lights. You're so near and spring is everywhere. We danced until the stars came out and spread across the sky. The wee small hours of morning all went by and day is here. We won't give up our dancing and across the floor we fly when you are near spring is in the air i hold you so close i think you must hear my heart tingle we're hand in hand cheek to cheek and floating when you are near, spring is everywhere.
so close I think you must feel my heart tremble We're hand in hand, cheek to cheek We're floating in midair When you are near, spring is everywhere We dance until the sun is down And stars are in your eyes Spring is here, I feel it The gentle April rain that stained the window panes last night Is all but gone, but lingers on in scented clouds of air We watch the town awaken to the trembling morning light you're so near and spring is everywhere We danced until the stars came out And spread across the sky The wee small hours of morning all went by And day is here We won't give up are dancing and across the floor we fly when you are new spring thank you so much for joining me today and making it all the way to the end of today's video i also want to give a huge thank you to all of my crafty beach bomb members for supporting my channel here on youtube thank you to karen o'haran melinda elizabeth jamie job susan edmonds carrie r tracy knight Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Pammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., Iris Cornelius, and anybody else that's joined. I am releasing this video a little bit later than I normally do. And if you would like to join, all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. If you'd like to watch more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Happy Easter!